Joining us now is Colin Coleman, head of the Sub-Saharan Africa Group at Goldman Sachs. He's a long-time associate of President Ramaphosa, and both were involved in the country's transition to democracy in the early 1990s. Today, Colin has announced his resignation from Goldman Sachs and a new role at Yale University. Colin, we'll talk about what the future holds for you in just a moment. Let's talk about the future for your country. Moody's placed South Africa on negative watch. Kind of, is that just inevitability now that we are going to see a downgrade? And what will that mean? Well, firstly, I think the markets were, uh, were, were bullish on the back of, of that, uh, that change because they were relieved that there was no downgrade. And I believe that um, going forward, you know, it, it does provide some impetus for uh, the political actors to refocus their efforts on improving the macroeconomic outlook. And the budget next year in February is going to be critical as a demonstration of how much they're able to contain yeah. expenditure, particularly with public sector wages. How much can Tito Mbueni, the finance minister, though, Colin, change the picture between now and then? Well, it's really about the political will to push for this uh, fiscal consolidation. Uh, and, you know, certainly the finance minister cannot do it alone. He's going to have to have all the backing of the president and a push in the ruling party to achieve that because the uh, main constituency that will have to take the pain is the union movement that has helped him to power uh, in uh, toppling President Zuma. So this is a very tough uh, moment for, for him and for the country. So Colin, it was definitely a little bit of a reprieve on Friday when the Moody's decision was just a, a downgrade to the outlook and not actually a downgrade of the rating to junk. But some of it does depend on ESCOM and we're looking for some clarity on what happens with ESCOM this week. What's your best reading? Well, the Minister of uh, Public Enterprises, Pravin Gordon, did announce a, a path to restructuring, which effectively involves a corporatization of the transmission. But where they failed to deliver from a market perspective was on a plan for two things. One, uh, the restructuring of the uh, balance sheet uh, and dealing with, an, with the debt. And two, on the operating costs, uh, which remain too high relative to the overall net debt of 14 times to EBITDA. So they have to articulate a restructuring plan on the debt and effectively take out around 250 billion of the 450 billion of debt to put it in a place where it can support the payment of the interest uh, on that debt. And effectively, uh, Moody's has said they should effectively take that on the government's balance sheet but provide a comprehensive restructuring plan for the operating costs and for the corporate reorganization. Uh, and again, this is where the rubber hit the road. Will they get the union backing to do this? And will the government take the pain, which I believe they should do in both cases? Right, because I want to ask you, how on a knife edge is South Africa with this question? Creditors are not going to be very sympathetic to ESCOM, right? So as long as the creditors hold out, there is the very, very clear and present danger that Moody's will eventually go through with the downgrade, at which point South Africa is, is in, in, in dire straits with its sovereign creditors. Well, certainly more of the same is not going to cut it with Moody's. Uh, so I think they have to take the action. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's absolutely clear uh, that they have no alternative but to uh, deal with this. The good news, though, is when you look at it, the uh, interest uh, cost of keeping on an ESCOM's balance sheet is going to be greater than taking it onto the government's balance sheet, but the government's on the hook anyway. So I keep on saying to those who will listen that it's actually uh, cheaper for them to take it on the government's balance sheet than it is for them to keep it on ESCOM's. Colin, you have announced today that you are going to be stepping aside at Goldman Sachs. So let's talk about what, what's next for you. What is next for Colin Coleman? Well, you know, I've announced that I'll be going to Yale as a senior fellow and lecturer, which is very exciting. It provides an opportunity for me to pivot uh, and reboot my career towards more an interface between the public and private sectors. You know, my history has been in the anti-apartheid movement prior to banking. And the banking side has given me a great exposure to the private sector. So it provides me with the opportunity to effectively provide private sector with 
some kind of bridge into the public sector and understanding the politics of doing business uh, in global emerging markets and in South Africa and Africa and at the same time provide governments and the public sector with my skills in terms of executing on com complex projects and dealing with financial sector restructuring. So I, I think this uh, Yale announcement is, I would guess, a short uh, one to two year arrangement, but more will follow with respect to how I arrange my career going forward, but it's very exciting. Colin, just looking back at your career with, uh, with Goldman Sachs and the last 20 years and what you've learned, what has changed in sub-Saharan Africa for the good and what has not changed in sub-Saharan Africa? What, what needs to change? Well, I think, you know, what we really want is we want to get the big countries doing well as well as the small countries. I say the small countries, perhaps Kenya being unkind, is a medium-sized country, but it's doing extremely well. Ethiopia's growth rate is doing much better. But the big countries, Nigeria, South Africa, Egypt, either have issues around economic st uh, structure, social issues, or political stability issues. In South Africa's case, it's really about getting the domestic policies right, uh, and to some extent the same in Nigeria. Uh, and, you know, my, my experience is that leadership uh, of these countries is critical. We've got the right leader in South Africa in Cyril Ramaphosa. I would back him to make the right structural reforms, uh, but he needs to perhaps lean in more aggressively into taking the risks to getting the right mix of skills uh, and taking the political decisions uh, that are necessary to get the structural reforms going. Uh, and, you know, one of my hobby horses at the moment is that the, the world of politics is not that well suited to driving structural reforms. You need to have much more of the private sector skills to get things done. Uh, and so I'm hoping that there will be a much more of a coming together between the public and private sectors in the future in Africa. Well, it's a little bit of a narrower question, Colin, but where do you see currencies headed, the, the main currencies, I suppose, that you deal with, and particularly the RAND, which is trading today at 1480? Well, you know, the RAND is, is, is obviously very volatile and fluid. It's very well traded. It's also a proxy for emerging markets and used by investors for that. I mean, broadly speaking, you know, uh, Goldman Sachs, and I personally believe that uh, the RAND is undervalued, uh, but, you know, sentiment plays a very big role. So to the extent that investor sentiment can be driven on the back of proper structural reforms, you know, investment in manufacturing, investment in tourism, invest in investment in exports of mineral product, that's going to drive a much uh, stronger RAND into the future. Uh, but certainly at this point, I would say it's undervalued. Colin, one final quick question on South Africa. Um, Cyril Ramaphosa was the guy that held the mic. He, he has a clear relationship with the transition of power that took place in South Africa. We had the Zuma era, and, and I just wonder whether the Zuma era and the legacy of it is really over. Does Cyril Ramaphosa have full control in the way that he needs to be able to deliver the policy that South Africa requires? Well, he doesn't have full control, but he has a majority say in what's going on in the ruling party. The, the Zuma administration has really been a dead weight on South Africa for the last 10 years, and we're emerging from that. Um, I would say, you know, uh, the, the president has to look more to the South African public uh, for, for support and help get the allies within the ANC, the ruling party, and the public behind him in order to create the oxygen for his political mandate. And I'm, I'm convinced the more that he acts aggressively and positively towards those structural reforms, the more he'll see success, the more he'll get the political mandate to uh, exercise uh, this kind of direction that South Africa is taking. But no question he's the right person for the job. Uh, and, you know, it's vital to South Africa and to Africa as a whole that he succeeds. Colin, congratulations on the announcement. We look forward to hearing much, much more from Colin Coleman uh, as he moves on from Goldman Sachs and moves into Yale. Colin, thank you very much indeed for your time today. We really appreciate it.